Hello and welcome to our video on how to solve train tracks puzzles. Um, now the rules of train tracks are pretty simple. You have to draw a single um, train track that runs between two stations, station A and station B. And um, it must be a single continuous track that doesn't cross itself. And these numbers around the outside tell you how many squares in each row and column the train track occupies. So the 7 here means that 7 of the 8 squares in this column must contain a piece of track and the track can either pass straight through a square or it can turn at right angles in the square. Those are the two permitted forms of movement. So when solving a train tracks puzzle it's usually um, best to first use the, the given pieces of track um, which you can always extend. So we see here this piece of track must move up here and must move out here because it's at right angles um, and down the bottom here this piece of track must come down and then this is a corner square so corner squares are really powerful if you know they contain a piece of track then its only option is to come out there because in any other direction it will go off the grid so it must come across there um, and now we can use the three here to see that we've got one, two, three pieces of track. Um, so to indicate that I'm just going to put an X in the squares. I know the track doesn't visit. Um, you may prefer a different notation. Um, again now this must come up here. Now looking at the final column, um, the final piece of track to pull out is here. But now there's something quite interesting. We can see that this column has three pieces of track in it. And because it will have to go, the track would have to go in and out um, of the column if it didn't extend here. So let's say it doesn't extend there. Then we'd need the track to always come into the column, but also come out of it somewhere. So if it goes there, it either has to go up or down. If it goes there, it has to come down and come out. So the smallest number of squares it could add would be to add another two to the column. But we've already got two and we only need one more. So what that means is that actually the only option is for the track to come straight up like that. That's the only way that that three can be valid. So we can cross those off and we can pull the track across here. Okay. Now we can do something similar here as well. So in this row we have one, two, three pieces of track already. So let's ask what happens if this piece of track doesn't move across there and were to come up. Then we'd have the same thing. To get the fourth square in the row, and we know there must be one more, and somewhere along we must come into it, but then to come into it we must move out, so either taking two squares there or there or there, and again that will give us five squares filled in the row, not, th not four. Therefore we know that this must come across. That's the only option, and that completes our four. And now this comes up to here. Now let's look at this column here with a 4 and this with a 2. And let's ask where this piece of loop can go. So we can see that if it were to come up here, then it can't connect to itself because that will close the loop. And if it were to come across here, then it uses all the squares in this column and therefore would have to come back across itself, breaking the rule that this only has 2. So we know it doesn't go up. So we can put an X there show that doesn't go up, which in turn means that this comes across here and that's used up already our one for the column. And therefore this moves across here. Now we know we have five squares to use in this row. 
and we've just shown this can't come up there therefore this square is now isolated because if we came in there we couldn't then come out and you must be able to move in and out of every square unless it's the entrance or exit so that square is now an X and likewise we can't come into this square because there'd be no way in and out you need a way in or out of every square that isn't the entrance or exit so that is like that and now therefore we have our five squares so we know this comes like this now we've already used three of the four squares in this row so we know that if this were to come down here and use up the fourth square then this would have to come down as well and then we'd have one two three four five instead of four so these must connect up there and that completes our five um, now we've got the two complete here and now effectively this becomes an edge row so we can use the same logic that we used at the start of the puzzle if this were to come across here it would have to exit there and that would break the two so it can't same applies here same logic applies here and so therefore it must come to there now this has two there's only one option left so it must come down like that and across there and that gives us our two and our four one two three four like that okay so one two three so we still have a fourth square here so again we can't be coming in like this because that will give us five therefore this must move across like that that gives us our four and then we come down okay now let's look at this row where we have one two three four five and five to place so we know that the loop must visit these two squares now does the loop go up here or does it move across well we need seven in this column so there's only one that isn't track now if this moves across here we'd have one two three four five six but again it's the edge so the loop would have to move in and down and use all the squares if it moved across here therefore it can't move across there and so it must come up now we have one two three four five six seven that must do that to complete the four the only option is to come across like this one two three four so this has to come across one two three four five six seven so that let's go like that and then the track let's come across here we have our two here and we come across there and we've got a single continuous track that goes from A to B okay so I hope you found that video useful in terms of some logic that you can use to solve a train tracks puzzle um, if you did like it then please do subscribe to our channel and let us know if there's any other solving videos you'd like to see thanks for watching bye